In this video, I'm gonna show you how to program drums using Studio One. This applies to any drum sample library, but first let's assume that you're going to use the built-in drum sampler inside of Studio One. In that case, you would go to Browse, Instruments, and in here, I'm gonna go to Vendor, Studio One, well, Personas, and Impact is the default built-in drum sampler that comes with Studio One. If you go to this drop down menu, you can see lots of different styles of drum sounds. For example, bass kit. Let's say that you want to use those sounds. I'm going to close the plugin. We're going to go to the track of the sampler and we're going to double click anywhere in the window within the track. And here I can drag or resize the MIDI event. I'm actually not going to use Impact. I'm going to use Contact. And this is the library I'm going to be using, Get Good Drums Modern and Massive. So it's going to be the same process. I'm going to double click and I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to drag it to the beginning so that it covers the whole song. If you want to make loops instead, you can just do little sections and then copy and paste them. In this case, I'm going to just make everything inside a single MIDI event. I'm going to double click it. And this is the MIDI editing page. Now for you, it probably looks like this. It's going to look like a piano roll. And this is because most instruments are, that you're going to be using in MIDI are going to be notes in a piano. But in this case, we have the instruments of the drum kit mapped to a keyboard. You could use a piano roll, but we're gonna go to the drum view. This is the optimal way to draw drums. So for you, it probably looks like this, just a bunch of notes that don't really mean anything to you. So the first thing we need to do is make a drum map. I'm going to click here to open my instrument. This is going to be different depending on which sample library you're using. But for me, it's in the settings. Here I have mappings. For your plugin, maybe it's inside the plugin or in the manual, you just need to find where the mappings are. And that means which key of the piano roll is the instrument that you wanna play. So for example, for a simple beat, we need the hi-hat, the kick and the snare. So it says kick is C zero and I can actually change the mapping, but we're not going to do that right now. So C zero, I'm going to go back to the editor and obviously this is much easier with two screens and I'm going to go to the piano roll just to show you that C zero is in fact the kick drum. This is useful if you have a keyboard and you're actually playing the drum part but right now we're gonna be drawing it with MIDI. I'm going to double click here just to draw a note. By default, it's going to be whatever you have up here. I have a whole note, so it's drawing a whole note. It takes the entire measure. So I'm going to open the plugin again just to see where my hi-hat is. Hi-hat close, it says B1. So B1, actually messed up, I'm going to Control scroll up to zoom in and I can actually click and drag up to be one or I can double click to delete it and double click here to draw it again. And finally, my snare hit is D zero. I don't need this anymore. So octave zero D here's my snare. I'm going to go back to the drum view and if I Control zoom out, I can see the notes that I used. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to click here on edit. And now I can name this kick. This is my snare. And here they go uh, upside down for some reason. So if you go down, they show you uh, the higher notes of the piano roll for some reason. This is my hi hat, so double click. I have H H. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to click here to go back to normal so that it just shows the names. Click here and hide unused. And now it only shows the notes that we're going to be using for this specific 
drum pattern. I recommend that you make a drum map for the sample library that you use and have all the notes that you're gonna be needing here and just do it once <laughs> the first time you're gonna be doing this and then just store the preset. Now let's make a very basic drum pattern. I'm going to change the quantize to eight notes. I'm going to select all of them and delete them. And I'm going to press the number three, or you can also click here to change the tools. We're going to be using the paint tool. And if you click and drag, you can see different versions of it, but we're going to use freehand. You can also change between them by pressing three over and over. And now it's way easier to cl just click and drag to draw eight notes. Let's listen to that. Perfect. I'm going to delete them and you can do that with any note value that you want by changing them up here. I actually do want eight notes, so let's do that. Let's draw the kick and the snare, press one. I'm going to select the snare and drag it. And here you can see that it's not snapping to the grid. Let's change this to quarter notes so that it, so that it snaps to each quarter note and make sure that snap is enabled. You can click here or press N. Now let's listen to that. You can select all of that and control C, control V. Control C, Control V. I'm gonna go back to the start and let's listen to that. Now down here, you can click and drag up to see the velocities. The velocities are how hard the instrument is being played. It's basically the attack of the note. So I'm going to go to one so that I can select all the hi-hats. And here, if I click on velocity, you can also select different parameters. You can close that and stay in velocity. You can see that by default, it's selecting 80% uh, for all of them. We can change that. So let's say that we're going to delete all of those. And let's say that we want one and three to be slightly more emphasized. I'm going to select this one, shift and this one and drag them up. I'm actually going to make this one even louder than this one. So I'm going to drag this one down. Now, these two are the ones that I want to be next in the velocity scale. And the rest are going to be slightly quieter. So now it should sound a little bit more natural. Now it sounds like the drummer is emphasizing one and two and three and four. Now I already have a drum pattern here that I made. I messed up my map, don't worry about that. And I wanna show you a couple cool stuff that you can do. We're gonna look at the velocities again. So here in the part where we're using the hi-hat, even though it says middle tom, by default, all of the notes were at 80%. So it looked like this, but I actually wanted every other note to be a little bit louder. I didn't want it to sound like this. it sounds like a robot. So what I did was I selected all of them, right click in any of those, select notes, select intervals, event count, every two of them, hit okay. And that saved me the time of clicking, shift, click, click, click. That's going to save you a lot of time if you have a lot more notes than this. So it should be like this. Now I'm going to select all of them, drag them up a little bit, and now it sounds like this. I actually want that to be a little bit more quiet. And now it's actually easier to select notes down here because it only takes into account the top of the bars. So it only selected these ones down here. Down in this section, you can also use the pencil tool. I mean, the paint tool. For example, in this section, these notes, again, looked like this. The velocity was flat. You can very easily press three, 
and then just draw the change in velocity. And now you have this effect. Okay, now we have a problem. It didn't select all of the notes. As you can see here, it only selected these notes. So now we have to select these ones down here, press three, and then I'm going to draw it. You can also go back to one and just click and drag them to change the velocities with the other tool. And now it should sound like this. And I actually use that again at the end. So now we're going to humanize the track. We're going to select all the notes, actions, humanize. And this is going to ask how much we want to randomize the velocities and the timing of the notes. You don't need a lot to make it sound human. So for example, the velocities, yeah, I want to make them, I don't know, maybe something like seven or eight percent. The notes start range, I want it to be very, very slight. So something like that. I'm going to click OK. And now you can see that the velocities are a little bit random. They're just a little bit louder or a little bit more quiet than we drew them. And if you zoom in, you can also see that the notes are not perfectly on the grid anymore. That's actually a little bit too much. So I'm going to Control Z and then go to Humanize again so that I can fix that. So I'm going to select all of them, Actions, Humanize, something like two or three, okay. And now it should sound even more human. And you can also fix the timing and make it perfect by selecting all of them and pressing Q. But be careful because if you zoom in, you can see that everything is on every quarter note. I'm going to go back to the previous action and you can see that it really messed up the timing. So if you quantize, while we have quarter notes selected, it's going to snap the notes to the closest quarter note. So this note, for example, would go to either one of these. So I'm going to get more specific. I'm going to go to 16th notes. I'm going to click quantize, and now they're perfectly placed on the grid. You can also go to quantize and change the settings here. Quantizing is mainly used when you are playing a MIDI keyboard to record. Humans are not perfect, so we sometimes need quantizing, and some of us need a lot of it. Even though this is only the basics on how to program MIDI drums using Studio One, this is like 90% of what you're going to use in your career. <laughs> but if you want more tips specifically on how to make your drums sound more realistic, click this video right here.